Today's episode is brought to you by the art scene. Visit artscene.com.au. Welcome to Glazed Over, the podcast for watercolour enthusiasts. I'll take you behind the washers, the dry brush and the horizon lines to ignite your passion of all things watercolour. I'm your host, Tony White. Thank you for joining me. Now let's get stuck in. G'day everyone, welcome to Glazed Over. This episode will be a cracker. I was lucky enough to spend a bit of time having a chat to the one and only Herman Peekle, um, brilliant watercolorist, brilliant painter all around. He's an interesting dude. If anyone has ever had the pleasure of meeting Herman, uh, it's definitely not a dull experience. He's a he's one, one of a kind. Just a little bit of business I want to get to quickly. If you guys could please head over to my website, tonywhitewatercolor.com. Um, sign up on the uh, podcast show notes page. There's a little blog and a little community we can all um, chat there. And uh, you can submit any questions, anything like that. Just contact me. All the links to everything are there. And you can please head over to my Patreon page too, which, which there'll be a link on my website also. If you would like to be a patron for this episode and for this show, I really, really appreciate it all of your support thank you very much and uh onwards and upwards here we go here's herman all right thank you very much and uh with me this afternoon we've got uh the world famous amazing unreal watercolorist known as herman Peekle. hey herman how you going g'day tony and g'day everyone good uh, thanks i'm good Good stuff. Ah, excellent. Thanks. Thanks for uh, joining us here on Glazed Over. And um, yeah, it's been a it's been a, a rough few months. But how you've been coping with it all? Oh, look, I've been in isolation for uh, for almost fifty five years. So <laughs> nothing's changed for me. Uh, oh, well, that's fair enough. I I go out painting every. If it's a nice day, I go out painting. And if it's a bad day, I'll just paint in my studio. Yeah, that's it. So as long as you can paint every day, you're laughing, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Good stuff. So, um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been different down here in Tassie. Our borders are, are shut. Obviously, you guys up there in Melbourne, yeah, are, yeah, everything's shut. Are in a bit now. Of, yep, everything's a bit shut. Of trouble at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> it's um, but uh, yeah, our borders don't open for another few weeks, and I'm I'm supposed to be up in Brisbane doing a workshop on the 25th. Our borders open on the 24th, so I don't like my chances. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. All happening, but um, right. So, just a, a little bit of background. So, Dutch parents. You grew up in Melbourne. Did you yes, spend yep, any time? Grew up in Melbourne. Uh, took up watercolors a long time ago. Uh, and then, you know, then did oils, did everything. But, um, yeah, yeah, so I grew up in Melbourne and probably started painting at a fairly young age. Did you spend any time back in the Netherlands as a kid? or? Uh, oh, we actually did. I was actually born here, but we went back when I was about five, four years old, I'd say, uh, right. four years old, and then we spent probably another year down there. So effectively... <laughs> uh, Dutch is my first language. Yeah, before, right. Before we left, yeah, I could speak very little English. I was probably only four because, you know, fairly isolated as a kid out in the, where we lived and uh, yeah. my parents didn't speak English. So really uh, Dutch is my first language. Yeah, right. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, yeah, even though English is my first language, it's a bit of a struggle sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, good thing. Get, try and try and do something in broadcasting if you can't speak properly, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you've like you've been a, a pro artist for a long time now. Did you have any regular jobs like nine to five type uh, stuff as you were growing up? Look, um, I have, but it was a long time ago. Look, in fact, even when I had a regular job that wasn't painting, I was still working yeah. for myself. Yeah, yeah. In right. fact, I would say um, my last job was when I was 17, yeah, when I actually right. was employed by someone. I've sort of either been self employed or been a full time artist, you know. Yeah. So I became a full time artist, I think, in 1988. Yeah, right. Jeez. Uh, probably no. 87. 80s. I think it was about 87. 
I, I became a full-time yeah. artist. Ah, cool. <laughs> Jeez. Before, you were, crazy, before you, you were born. Before you were born. 87, I wish, mate. I wish. Um, did you um, did you do any sort of, you know, work at Woolies type stuff or anything like that? In- oh, no. When I was a junior, I, I did taxi driver. I was a taxi driver. Yeah, right. For a few years. Yeah, I was a taxi cool. driver for a couple of years while the junior. So that was the sort of job yep. I had at uni. Yeah. Yeah, right. Unreal. And what did you study at uni? Does it fine uh, arts or... I did a couple. I did a, I did a degree in teaching yep. and, and I did a so-called fine arts degree. We'd had absolutely nothing to do with art at all, but yeah. it was the, <laughs> uh, that's where I learned to ta- – that's basically where I learned to drink. Was um, yeah, <laughs> in a fine arts yeah. degree, and you know, uh, didn't learn anything about painting. Absolutely zero about painting, but I did learn a lot of drink, a lot of art history stuff as well. Uh, a little bit of art history, yeah, 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 right, yeah. But um, I think everyone just learns to drink at uni and the at the bar and yeah, every, uh, <laughs> du- during lectures and tutorials. Good, um, mate. Your love, your your painting. Passion, I, as far as I can see, is the painting the Aussie bush. Yes. Um, they're beautiful works. Now, aside from the landscape itself, I mean, as far as your painting goes, uh, whether it's a painter or someone else, who actually, what person, what individual, if any, uh, influences you to keep painting? Or do you don't need that influence? It's just in you. Uh, yeah, look, I think once you've done something for so long, yeah. You just got to keep doing it, and as you get older, what happens is, yeah, you will get smaller as you get older. So there's a lot yeah. less less to do. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. you know, like when you're young, you know, you go to nice clubs, you you know, you play sport, you do all the stuff. And as yeah. you get into my age, basically, what else do you do? You paint. So yeah. you know what I mean? And 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 yep. during this last uh, lockdown period. You know, artists have been really, really blessed because I don't think it's yeah. made any difference whatsoever. Like my life is exactly the same as it always mm-hmm. is. In fact, I'm probably painting more now because of yeah. less distractions. And That's so, right. You've got nothing you've got to go and do. That's yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Less distractions and also no workshops. That's the biggest thing, no workshops mm-hmm. overseas. Yeah, that's that's right. That's one of the funny things that with that I've been doing these sort of online stuff is that I I don't think I've painted for myself. This is a downside to it. I don't think I've actually painted anything for myself in a couple of months, <laughs> just about. Oh, it's, so, it's interesting. Well, well, me, it's the opposite because yeah. I've done no teaching. I've just yep. painted anything I felt like doing. So there's no Unreal. no galleries, no nothing. So I yep. just think, look, if I feel like doing a street scene, I'll do a street scene. If I feel like yep. heading up the bush, I'll head up the bush. So it, it's <laughs> actually know. quite liberating, not having yeah. galleries, having no one, just painting. It's, it's a nice feeling. Yeah, that's the go. Unreal. Um, just a bit of nuts and bolts kind of stuff with painting, uh, with watercolours obviously in particular. I see you've been painting a lot of watercolours recently. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there one item, like I know, you know you'll know this, student, students get obsessed with materials and things more, probably more so than painting itself sometimes. Yeah. Um, do you have, like in your in your kit, in your bag that you take with you when you're painting, do you yeah. have any one, one physical item of art supply that you feel naked painting without? Oh, look, well, it's not paint as long as I've got paint. All paints yes. are the same to me. It doesn't really matter. Mm. You, I probably would struggle without ultramarine blue, right? Yeah, yeah. But I can do without it, you know, if you've got some sort of a blue. Yep. So to be ultramarine blue is one thing, but that's not the major thing. Obviously, yeah. paper is another important thing for watercolourists, right? Yes, yeah. Uh, but I'm fairly adaptable to different papers. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, yep. Uh, probably really don't mind which paper. Uh, lately, the reason I'm using that Chinese paper, not that I think yep. it's anything special and there's things I don't like about that Chinese paper, but yeah. I've got so much of it. When I was in China recently, I bought yeah. 
so much of it. Uh, because, yeah, yeah. You know, I was there and I thought, well, why not buy while you're in China? So I think I bought a 1,000 sheets. So that's – but it's good <laughs> stuff. So, look, okay, yeah. paper helps. Um, really, uh, brushes – Really, look, if you've got a pointy brush, you need three brushes. You need a hake for, for your washers mm-hmm. or something big or a big mop, but a hake will do. You need a pointy brush for detail, and then you need a yep. bit of an older brush for foliage. So you've got three old yeah. brush, three brushes. You've got four colours. All you need is four colours. You obviously mm-hmm. need an ultra, uh, a good yellow ochre or raw sienna, and a lizarin. Viridian helps, yep. and that's about it. A bird sienna helps as well, but, you know, yeah. so really as long as you've got at least three of the primaries, three um, uh, paper, and three mm-hmm. brushes, that's no, really all you stuff. need. Excellent. And, uh, yeah, you, you need clothing as well so you don't feel so naked, I guess. Uh, <laughs> well, it's a good helps. point because um, I, I drive a van and, gee, it's been cold here lately. and. Uh, so I always yeah. carry a lot of clothes, old clothes with me. So when I'm out painting, you know, like the other day I painted, and gee, it was like, I don't know, five degrees, which is pretty cold for me. Yeah, and yeah. it was windy and, you know, I, I think I had about six jumpers on. <laughs> Good stuff. That's it. Um, when we've um, hung out a couple of times at Bathurst there, you've uh, – you could have been a bloody comedian, like your your delivery and your stories, and, and uh, having a having a couple of drinks at the bar, etc. Have you got anything uh, suitable for a polite audience? I suppose that uh, oh, you, dear. any funny oh, stories. Dear. Oh gee, have I got? Oh look, with watercolor, <laughs> there's always lots of stories, and, and the good thing is when you paint outside, you have lots of stories too. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Yep. you know. Uh, yeah, uh, look, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, uh, there's one I've got, but no, I, it's not that politically correct these days. <laughs> but it's a fun, <laughs> it was a funny yeah, story. I was out with um, Joseph. Yep. And I was out with Alvaro and a few of the others, and we found this great spot, you see. And um, and we didn't know. I uh, well, actually. Actually, no, look, I better not tell that story because <laughs> we, were, we were in this place and we never realised But back in that, it was about 10 years ago, it was actually a yeah. gay haunt and we never knew it was. And we were painting right. and painting and painting and and, we, and all these people were coming and we, we had no ideas. We, and all of a sudden it was quiet. It was quiet. And we kept painting. Yeah. We thought, oh, well, we'll just keep painting. Didn't matter yeah. why. It was, all these men were just driving and driving around us, and we didn't know what was going on. And we were painting. I think it was up near Port Kembla, up near Wollongong. And then yeah. it got to 7 o'clock, 8, and we were painting. It started getting dark, and then we got – and then we drove down. It was sort of in a park, and they'd closed the gate, <laughs> and we couldn't get out. <laughs> and I thought, oh, gee, and um, – and it's funny to know how the life's ch- how the world's changed. This is only yeah. like maybe eight years ago. How the world has changed so much, oh, yeah. you know. And eight year- and then we couldn't get out. Eventually, uh, we had to ring up the caretaker to mm-hmm. let us out. Right, he had the number yep. there. And the funny thing was, he called us all na- all sorts of names. You know, all really? sorts of names. You know. You know, Jeez. obviously homophobic names. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Called yeah. us all these names that, like stuff that you, if you said that now, you'd be arrested. Yeah. And absolutely. the funny thing, and I remember the boys saying, "No, but we're artists. We're artists. We're not gay. <laughs> we're artists. We're, we're artists." And I remember the caretaking the caretakers saying, "If you're artists, then you're bloody." And starts with the word P. <laughs> yeah. And I remember, oh, and I remember, the, and then I remember one of the artists, I think it was Elbro, had a picture of his wife. And he says, Look, I'm married. I'm married. Look at my wife. And, and I remember the caretaker was a real Aussie bloke, a real Aussie yeah. bloke saying, Yeah, you're all the same. That's what they all do. <laughs> and it's, funny, it's just a front. Not so long ago. And it's funny how. Attitudes have changed so much in this short period yeah. of time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's great. It's uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Well, that was one story, but yeah, so it's the only one. I- <laughs> but you always <laughs> have a lot of good stories when you paint outside. No, nah, that's the go for sure. Absolutely. Um, yeah, just a couple of a couple of little things. What um, if you oh, if you were to have any pet peeves in the art world? I know. I mean, you've been around a long time and you've sort of seen a lot of stuff come and go and change. Yeah. Is there anything in particular with the art world and watercolour world that you would change, anything that gets your gets under your skin a bit? Well, there's really nothing except what I do is I had to judge a show the other day in Melbourne. Mm-hmm. And, yep. I, yeah, I, judge. I don't judge that much, but I judge a bit. And generally when I judge, I always look for watercolourists that use their own brush strokes. And they're right, yeah. if you know what I mean, they, mm-hmm. they use their own marks and their work is identifiable as their own work. Yeah. So I make sure that's one of the things I see. Like, and I guess because we live in a, in a digital age where all the imagery, you know, like there's so much mm. imagery around of different watercolorists yeah. and, and there's so many videos and uh, DVDs available that mm-hmm. a lot of people, it's very, very, very easy to copy watercolour. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You, yeah. you can buy a DVD, put it on still, you know what I mean, and, and just yeah, copy the artist right. exactly. So mm. the, the work that I look for is work that's, you know, not, I mean, I don't mind influences, that's fine, but yeah. direct copies of oh, yeah. other artists. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. You've got to have got to have a bit of your own flair involved in it. Oh, Otherwise, yeah, there's yeah, no, yeah. no point in doing what you're doing. You know. Oh, there's just so many. Like, I mean, there's won't mention any names, but there's so yeah. many. There's a couple of well-known artists. Like, I remember the two mm-hmm. well-known ones that are, say Joseph and Albro, right? And yeah. they've both done a lot of teaching. However, mm-hmm. there must be in the world. I reckon there must be fifty thousand people that copy them. Yeah, absolutely, have for be, sure. Has to be 50,000. Yeah. It's unbelievable, you know what I mean? Yeah. And look, there's nothing wrong with it, but I don't, you know, I don't respect it. That's the only thing. I would never respect anyone who copies. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I guess there's a difference between sort of coming up and learning learning your craft and, you know, wearing your influences on your sleeve a little bit at that point, but you've got to that's get to fine. the point where we you're trying do. to find your own. Niche, right? your own thing. And yeah. that's the sort of mark of an artist. If you're meant to be an artist, uh, like I remember years ago with Albro, uh, he did totally different sort of work. And eventually mm. he's been able to find his own style, his own technique, yep. and also his own subject matter, which has mm-hmm. become, you know, whereas there are other artists that haven't been able to do that. So I think that's a very, very yeah. important part of painting is to find your own subject mark, a matter and your own marks. Yeah, that's right. Perfect. Yeah, couldn't put it any better. It's a, it's a hard thing to do and it takes time and I think a lot, a lot of people just become too impatient and try to put the, put the cart before the horse sometimes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. Yeah. The Art Scene Winter Sale is now on with massive store-wide savings. With up to 25% off all paints, 50% off all Art Basics portfolios, 20% off all Art Basics stretch canvas, 25% off all brushes plus much, much more. Head over to artscene.com.au or click the link in the show notes to check out the full catalogue. All offers available only during June and July 2020 or while stocks last. No rain checks. Freight charges will apply to all mail orders. Discounts listed in this brochure cannot be used in conjunction with any other promotion or discount offerings. Now, in um, just a little bit of fun to uh, to sort of tie us up here, we've got uh, just some some funny little questions that are put together. Sure. Um, so let's set the scene. It's... Uh, you know, Saturday Arvo, you've been out painting all day. You're gonna, you, you got the house to yourself. Sure. And it's a nice day. You've got the Barbie on. Sure. You can, you've got only six, you've got six chairs at your table. One of them, which, one of which will be taken up by yourself. 
Yes. Anyone in the world, dead or alive, anyone from history, who do you want there? You've got five guests. To, uh, uh, okay. Number one, <laughs> number one would be Van Gogh. Yep. Yeah, uh, number one because I can speak. My Dutch is not great, but I can speak yeah. Dutch. And you can find out what actually. And happened. I would love to talk to him and say, look, because I think history says that he only sold one painting, and I would say to him, you know, you're the most one of your art, one of your paintings is worth more than all the houses in my suburb. <laughs> and <laughs> exactly. I said to him, look, you've got a big museum named after you. Where I tried to get into the Van Gogh Museum once, and I couldn't because it was like a four-hour waiting list, you know. Oh, and I was just waiting there, and I just got sick of it. And I thought, look, I'll see them online. So he is definitely oh. one person that I would love to talk to and s- tell him how famous is he is. And I yeah. know he wouldn't believe me. He'd say, "You're a bullshit artist." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's right. one artist that would I would love to meet for that particular reason. Yep, perfect. What about um, if there were any, uh, if there was any time period that you could exist as as you as you you are an artist, uh, you as yourself as an artist? If any, would you be in the Renaissance? Uh, oh, I'm guessing Dutch masters, you know, Vermeer's uh, time, those kind look, of things. Where I would reckon, you like to be? Look, I've been blessed. I painted when it couldn't have been better, right? Yeah. I wouldn't have liked to have lived during the Renaissance or during the Dutch masters because mm-hmm. I'm not good enough. Uh, Vermeer and Rembrandt would have looked at my work and would have thought, nah, that's a pile of crap. So I'm really glad I didn't exist then <laughs> uh, because I reckon Rembrandt would have looked at my work and said, what's this guy doing? So <laughs> I, I think, I'll be very honest, it's I was very fortunate to be painting full-time probably from the mid-'80s, 90s, and then up to about 2000, after the last recession, 2008, it started getting really yeah. tough. So yeah, right. basically I had 30, at least 30 good years of mm. selling everything I painted. So I was yeah. really blessed. Do you know what I mean? No, oh, good. Yeah, perfect. So I, I, you couldn't yeah. really beat that. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good to. Yeah. it's good to kind of. It's good to yeah. see. Um, it's good to see you appreciating. You know, oh, yeah. you have in, I've been in your very life. fortunate great. to have been around then. Absolutely, oh. and even now, look, it's, I'm still selling. So you know, oh, look, yeah. I'm not, I wouldn't selling. I'm. Not, it's nothing like it used to be, but there's still, you know, mm. the odd painting sells now. You know, always get a phone call from a gallery. Oh, we sold that. We sold that, and you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. As long as you can make your living and pay your bills and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, like how you want to live. That's, that's the well. Point. I remember my first exhibition was in, uh, now this is definitely before you were born. <laughs> Nineteen seventy four was my first exhibition. Yep, mm-hmm. and I remember it was at the top of Burke Street near the theatre. There, I don't know what the theatre is called, Majesties or one of those theatres at the top of yep, Burke Street yep. and Exhibition Street. And there was a gallery just a little bit down from the top there. And there was a queue. I reckon I turned up at about 6 o'clock and I saw this queue and I thought this queue w- was for the theatre goers. Yeah, right. It turned out they were all going to my exhibition. And I remember ah. uh, going into the doors and every single painting had a sold sign on it, had a sticker, oh, you know, red dot. It was red amazing. Dots. And sometimes I still have those dreams and, you know, you wake up and you have a dream that you've sold every painting and then you wake <sighs> up and it's, oh, shit, it's 2020 <laughs> and no one wants to make it anymore. That's right. And if they, and if they do, they'll put a red dot on it and then haggle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I couldn't <laughs> believe it. Yeah, every single painting sold. And, and I was like 18 at the time and I remember it was enough. I, I, that exhibition believe it or not, netted me, um, it's just ironic, $6,000, $7,000, I think, profit for that exhibition, which doesn't yeah. seem much now, right? Oh, but yeah. in 74, yep. I was going to buy a single-fronted house 
in Fitzroy, which was then a really rough area, really yeah. rough area. But houses, single-fronted houses, were six thousand dollars. And I remember my mum not letting me. She said, "You're not wasting your money on a house in Fitzroy. This house now in Fitzroy it was opposite Edinburgh Gardens. I remember it'll be two million dollars oh. now." <laughs> Bloody hell! And this is funny. Oh, and love this it. is just some kid doing watercolours in 1974. So I can say that I've been really blessed. Yeah, absolutely. No, good. That's good. I really love it. Um, just to wrap us up here, there's the last um, little bit of wisdom we need. So if if we've got someone about to start out on their little watercolour expedition in life, whether it's painting, but watercolours um, specifically, I suppose. Uh, what bit of advice, what do you wish you would have known back then that you know now? Uh, well, when I started, there were no lessons. Mm. Uh, it t- takes you 30 years to work. When you've got lessons, it's so much easier because yeah. What takes me 30 years to learn or 20 years to learn, you can impart in a week to someone. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. And so I'd worked out two things. The biggest thing in watercolours, and it took me like 20 years to work this out, so that's Mm. when I look back at some of my old watercolours and I think, God, well, the most important thing, I will talk about watercolour, right? The most important thing, no more than two washes. Mm. That's the thing. If you can break your painting down to two washes and you'll always have a clean painting. And the most important yeah. thing with a watercolour, before we start, it has to be clean. If it's not yeah. clean, you don't even get the first base. Yeah. So I really, no. it took me ages to work out. No more than two washes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, two washes. Yeah, and that, good and stuff. If you, if you want to go to another wash? Generally, I don't. But you're allowed to use dry brush. So you've got two washes plus dry brush, and that should be enough. Ah, uh, perfect. Now that's a great advice to end on, and uh, that's what we're all after: is that cleanliness and the crispness in in watercolor. And it, it's too easy to overwork. That's for sure. So uh, perfect advice there, mate. Good on you, Tony. No worries. No worries, Herman. Well, thank you very, very much. And I'll put uh, all the links to anything you want to share. I'll put them in the show notes, everybody. You guys can have a look. And uh, thanks very much for joining me, mate. I really appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Good on you, mate. Take care. See ya. Here's mate. Bye. Bye. Oh, what a chat. What a fella. No, he's a good bloke. Uh, thank you so much, Herman, for all your time and your effort in uh, – contributing to the show really appreciate it mate and the listeners will appreciate it as well uh if you guys could please 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 head over to my website like i say um and join up to all the little communities there and also uh, go to itunes or spotify uh apple Podcasts, i believe it's called these days um apple podcast spotify stitcher wherever you're listening to the podcast and subscribe and rate and review and send me an email thewhitearts at gmail.com that'd be unreal as well uh next time we'll see you with another episode and i really really look forward to catching up again cheers adios amigos thank you so much for listening if you enjoyed the podcast please rate and review on apple podcasts or wherever you are listening if you didn't like it your silence is greatly appreciated thank you again and catch you next time